So if it's, if it's not unisex cut, how do you make it so that different genders and different body builds can, can wear the same outfit? Will you answer that, Walter, and then I'll give my interpretation too. Okay, I would be glad to answer that actually. And I, I provided some personal books to Tom and Frank Campbell. They were going to do, do, have the same outfit, although still the traditional in men's and women's. My name is Nevera Messi. My name is Drew Webster. Oops, I'm sorry. Hold on. And I go to the high school that I was in industry. Hold on. We are showcasing our final designs as the new Anna Crosser. She gets to be firsthand in the I world go? of fashion, art, and business. Maybe it's the Google. Yeah, it's there. There. Okay. Let me get rid of those. Brown. Okay. So should I start over? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. start over. Yeah. Okay. So I actually, that's one of my <coughs> challenges that I'm constantly trying to overcome at the moment because I, I do want to break into retail and I'm trying to find a way to solve that problem. I look to Tom Brown and they have this not the still binary men's section, women's section. Um, so I'll have one garment cut two ways, but the fit and the look of it will be the same. Like I have a, a white shirt that one, like I cut it first on a women's wear dress form no darts, straight fit with the ruffle sleeve. And I want to do the same overall aesthetic of the garment for male presenting customers. They may have wider shoulders, bigger necks, longer arms, but the proportions are still the same based on the fit. Um, do, you, do you have a picture of that, Dr. Costin? Yeah, I do. Of, you mean of the actual, um, the garment the on the, on the, the I have the, shirt. the white shirt. we did see the white shirt on the consumer profile, but I didn't put the picture on the, on the, on the uh, dress form. Oh, you, oh, yeah, no, you can go to the, cons the consumer profile page. Okay. So are you going to make sizing different? If you're going to, I mean, if you're not going to have a male, a men's department and a women's department, am I no longer going to walk in and buy a 10? I'm going to buy... Yeah, okay. A ZZ or whatever, you know, some some new post, some new shiny project. And, and that's what Too Good does. Okay. Um, I didn't I didn't like look into like creating my own size range yet. Okay. I feel like for me, starting out, I want to try to just get into the market. Um, so I did. I do alphanumeric sizes, okay. um, still in the binary. But each garment is available for every customer, and it should fit them nicely and make them look the same. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, Christopher John Rogers, who is the colorful, voluminous, he also does a, a lot of big shirt shirt dress type of construction. Mm -hmm. Also accordion pleated palazzo type pants and, and big skirts and the big volume skirts like the one on Lady Gaga. Those are forgiving um, in certain areas. Uh -huh. So both for men and women. Right. So um, which makes him very popular with both sexes. But the sizing is definitely an issue that I think Walter was able to discuss better his shirt that he's talking about is this one, the Rosu, which he had photographed on both men and women. And um, I don't know how to get. I don't know how to go get back <laughs> to the present. Here it is. This, no navigator. Yeah. So it works yeah. right here. Walter talks. So the fashions will be more accommodating potentially in terms of the body size. Uh, yeah, because they have. Where women have, there it is. Oh, let's see if I can get it back. 
what it is a slide. Slide all around. Yeah. 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 Just a little vlog of it. <laughs> there you go. That's a better picture of it. So if you look at the shirts, they're outwardly they're the same, but the patterns are different in certain ways. But I wanted the pro overall proportions to look the same. So I did not put a bus guard on the women's women presenting customer shirt because there's not a guard on the men's shirt. If that makes sense. Like they are the same shirt with differences in the pattern. More questions. Other questions? Kim, locally, is there a place to go find and buy this, these items? <laughs> if you go to Chicago? I, um, there might be. I haven't, you know, things hit, like, like we said, things stopped during COVID and now you know, there should be online online availability of certain things. There's a lot of um, t-shirts and things like that. There's a lot of gay pride merchandise. There's a lot of um, uh, that. But to, I don't know, Walter, besides, we, we had another retailer in there called Nico Panda. And Nico Panda was um, the product of a real genius who's had experience working for all sorts of big brands like Dolce and Gabbana. He's Italian and, and he worked for Dolce and Gabbana and all sorts of big brands. But Nico Panda seems to be stalled right now since COVID. So a lot of things are just sort of starting up again and I, uh, even the fluid project is sort of stalled. And they were also, they were gonna work with Nico Panda they were, they were doing collaborations with all different independent designers. The Fluid Project is doing all sorts of collaborations with independent designers and they list them all on their website. So yes, you could go on their website and probably order clothing from the Fluid Project, for example, or beauty products or accessories or lingerie. There's a vintage store in Grand Haven called Fluid. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's, okay. You know, There's my lack of knowledge on the local. It's, uh, well, she's new. Yeah, it's, they just celebrated their one year anniversary, I think. Okay. And it's, um, it's um, on 31, yeah, um, just where the, um, where the Grand Haven Garden House used to be. Yeah. At the other end, at the end on. Uh, now where Two Yolt Cafe is. In the strip mall where. Finding investors, that's a really good one, Walter. Um, <laughs> part of our project, you know, um, I went into a whole bunch of recommendations about how to find investors. And a lot of it had to do with networking, but there are specifically, um, there are specific fluid investors out there that are interested in this kind of thing. And, and uh, now, I mean, if you also, if you look at the list of companies that were being advised by, by um, the Fluid Project, they're potential investors because they've got buckets of money and they're looking at Generation Z and saying, we want in on that. And so they're looking for young designers like <laughs> Walter and they want to know about, about it and potentially buy into that, yeah. So in terms of sourcing, the pr same product pro problems that all industry have that COVID slowed sourcing down for everything, you know, so it's just coming back now. But I don't think that there's any, do you think there's a specific sourcing problem for, for gender no. fluid? No. It, no, this I don't is think a so. gender non-binary clothing and gender fluids uses a lot of the same materials. I mean, are there new countries in either Asia, Africa, India, other areas that where, you, where maybe traditional On a small scale, I mean, there are, yeah, there are suppliers of yarns and, and fabrics from Peru and, and so forth in all sorts of different countries, but in even from America now, again, but, um, you know, it's small and it's, it's more, you, you know, if you're local and you can get it, 
or in the case of Peru, they have a cotton brand mm -hmm. that they promote. And then um, some of the really upper end yarns like Vicuña, they have uh, relationships with Xenia and big menswear companies where they buy a lot of that yarn because it's really expensive. But for, you know, for this kind of, well, if we get into luxury with Louis Vuitton, Moete, Hennessy, they can buy anything they want, anything. The designers can have carte blanche. The checkbook is open. <laughs> Warren. I had, as I listened to your presentation on the walk today, a part of it was suggesting a societal transformation that people are no longer bound by traditional gender roles and their expression of those roles are no longer rule driven and requiring. So that all sounds very. It sounds great, doesn't very it? <laughs> Um, fashion does change all the time. This is, um, there are bigger, in the, in the world of trend forecasting, there are short-term fluctuations and there are long-term fluctuations. In fact, I thought about showing the slide. There's a bell curve on traditional fashion and what makes a, a short-term season, seasonal fashion, say in color, style, cut, fit, and how long it extends and why. There's the drivers that keep something going are people. They're usually people, but they're also economics. They are world wars, they're wars. We have a war right now in the Ukraine and Europe. There are, there are other big drivers, climate change, things like that, that affect the length and the, the, the strength of a, of a phenomenon that affects fashion. Um, but what, this, what the, some of the statistics suggest is that this is something that has not happened before in the same way, or at least that it has not been measured in the same way, and that we're seeing something that is really significant. And you know, going back to what fashion responds to, the industry and designers respond to what people want. They're not just saying, I feel blue, you know? It's about what people want and what's going to sell, what people are saying they want.